This is a special presentation of Farm Journal Television. Hello, I'm Clinton Griffiths and you're locked in to Corn College TV. Today, we're digging into soil density. Learn how these particles work together and what it means for your corn. Later, find out what tools are useful in fixing soil problems such as compaction and ruts. And knowing good growth when you see it, Ken Ferry walks us through what to look for when evaluating a stand. Welcome to Corn College TV with field agronomist Ken Ferry, associate field agronomist Missy Bauer, Farm Journal's Margie Fisher, and host Clinton Griffiths. Welcome to class, Corn College that is. If it's your first time or you've been enrolled since the beginning, we've got a great group of tips coming your way. On Corn College, our agronomist Ken Ferry and Missy Bauer talk a lot about the systems approach breaking apart the farming operation into smaller, manageable segments. At the foundation are tillage practices and soil conditions. Missy Bauer is here with a look at a key part of that, managing soil density layers. How do I identify or know if I have a, a soil density problem? Now, I want to back up a little bit and maybe define why, in my opinion, is the difference between soil compaction and soil density layer, okay? In my view, when we think about soil compaction, it's actually taking these individual soil particles themselves, so I got my sand, my silt, my clay, these individual particles, and they're being compressed or flattened out, okay? Maybe wheel tracks, uh, maybe uh, very wet tillage, anything like that that's gonna cause compaction to flatten those individual particles. You can see it in the picture here where this is uncompacted particles and these ones have been compacted or flattened out. Okay, when that happens, you'll see in the soil, uh, in this particular root ball, we can see a lot of real platy looking uh, soil structure in here. So those particles have been compressed, okay? That's, that's soil compaction. What soil density uh, refers to is de density is the amount of space in between the particles. So I've got all my soil particles arranged out here. How much air space is in between them? Think of having a five gallon bucket and dumping it full of golf balls. Okay, how much space or air space is in between those golf balls? That's what we're talking about density. Versus maybe you take a, uh, that same five gallon bucket, now you've poured marbles in there or peas or something smaller where they can pack in closer together. Okay, so density is the amount of space in between particles. So in this case here, we have a, a soil density layer because a field cultivator was ran at four to five inches deep. We loosened the soil up, real, real light, real fluffy, got it all loosened up. And at this depth where we quit running that, then the soil didn't have any other tillage done underneath it, and it's very dense soil down here. Okay, so we got loose soil, we got more dense soil down here. And it's the roots, as Ken mentioned this morning, as these roots grow down through here, they can't handle a sudden density change. Now, if it's a gradual change, they can get through there a lot better. But if they're coming down and it's a sudden change in density, they're gonna end up turning on us. Okay, roots naturally are gonna grow down at a 35 to 40 degree angle. This root ball here, you can see how the soil was sheared off right here, and this is very hard, firm soil. It's actually pretty loose on top but this was our layer where the density change was, okay? This is what ran with a field cultivator at that depth. And you can see here, we actually have some roots that come down, they hit that layer, and they turned and they're running horizontal, okay? So the roots, when you have this sudden change of density, are gonna come down there and they can't get through, then they're gonna start going sideways instead of at, down at that natural 35 degree angle like they should. So this is what we're talking about when we're talking about soil density change. Another way that we can look and try to identify if we have a density layer or not is going out with a, what they call a soil pentrometer. We actually just push the rod into the ground. It's got a gauge on it. It's going to give you an idea of how much pressure. What I like to do is just use a regular even uh, soil rod and just go ahead and push it into the soil and you can actually feel where there's spots that it gets a lot harder to push through. And then push through that and see if you can feel another one. So you can do some things just by feeling. Um, Obviously, one nice way to do it, especially as you get later in the year, is to dig a soil pit like this. Um, so you don't always have to have a backhoe. If you've got a hired man and a shovel, you can do it quite a bit too. So, no, I'm just joking there. But, you know, you, you don't have to get this extensive. You can do it just over a couple rows. I usually at least try to cr 
across a couple rows. So it, it gives you a pretty good idea of what's going on. What the soil pit allows us to really be able to tell is the water movement. Because what do we want water to do in the spring? Go away. And what do we want it to do today? Come back, okay? So we're always trying to get rid of water, and then, oh, we want it back, okay? Still to come on Corn College TV, evaluating the stand, Ken Ferry walks us through how to look, find, and know if the crop in the ground is as good as it could be. Plus, we answer your questions about measuring planting depth throughout the growing season. And later, heavy rain combined with heavy equipment can leave big problems in the field. Get a few tips on fixing those problems later when Corn College TV continues. Corn College TV is brought to you by DeKalb. For all season strong performance and results you can take to the bin. Go with DeKalb. Gets results with strong roots and strong stocks for performance you can take to the bin. Go with industry leading DeKalb genetics and proven genuity trait technology, letting you get more from every acre. Go all season strong. Go with DeKalb. Hello, folks. This is Mark Gold with Top Third Ag Marketing. If you need help marketing your grains or livestock, give us a call. We offer one on one relationships that can protect you without the threat of margin costs. We don't speculate, we manage risk. If you're tired of paying acreage and management fees for marketing advice that hasn't actually helped your bottom line, then give us a call. Call today to get two weeks of Mark's private grain marketing email. Top Third Ag Marketing, earning the trust of American farmers every day. America needs to know that something still works in this country. One of those things that is working well is agriculture. And at U.S. Farm Report, what's crucial to me is to make sure we convey the confident, competent voice that I hear from America's farmers and rural residents, that they can count on us. Rural America works. Agriculture works. Watch U.S. Farm Report Saturday morning and Sunday afternoons on RFD-TV. U.S. Farm Report, the spirit of the countryside. Mark your calendar. Ag Connect Expo 2011 is coming to Atlanta, Georgia on January 7th through the 10th. Connect with experts. Learn new ideas, new technology. Connect to the future of agriculture, the newest innovations. Connect globally with producers from around the world. This show sets itself apart from the regional shows. Ag Connect Expo 2011, where the world of agriculture comes together. There's nothing better than getting off the tractor after a long stint of planting and in a few days seeing sprouts of green covering the soil. Agronomist Ken Ferry is here to talk about what comes next, evaluating that stand, finding out how many of those seeds are making plants and how many plants are making corn. Here's Ken with today's Head to the Field lesson. We talk about ear count, ear count, ear count. Ear count comes from uniform stance. And uh, knowing that you have a uniform stand is important. In a situation where we're going to give you some tips about going home and evaluating your stands when you get out of here, where am I at? And it's crucial, I found with our and our client base, you got to get the grower out there evaluating his stands or you can't improve it. And when we go out into the field uh, and look at the ear count and we look at uh, how many ears we got, we realize it's key to the uniformity of the stand. There's two areas of uniformity. The first one is picket fence stand, the term that we use, and that's where the, we evaluate how you did in seed singulation. As far as how your planter operated, how many doubles, triples, skips you have, how good a job did you get out there to giving each plant an equal um, uh, chance within it. And when we go out in the field and we see doubles and triples and problems with the uh, stand itself, where do we look? goes to the planter. So a situation where the picket fence stand is the easy part. The next part is the photocopy. We want every plant to be a photocopy of the plant next to it in pollination, in growth, in visual appearance, um, and in stalk diameter. Preferably healthy, but we can have a uniformly poor crop uh, and it reflects something else like nitrogen 
or phosphorus and not the planning process. We're evaluating the planning process. So our, we're looking for uniformity. So we want to go out here and evaluate this corn stand because we want uniform emergence and we want good ear count. Industry standard from planted target to ear count is around a 10 to 13 percent drop. We try to get that in the 5 or 6 percent drop range. I've been told more than once that's unrealistic. But the reality is we have a number of growers that can do it. They may not do it every year, they may not do it in every field, but they do it consistently as far as trying to squeeze that drop down. So the way we, they know that is they're out there working with it. Now we need some tools when we're going to the field as far as you're going to go out there and stretch a tape. And you're going to stretch a tape for a thousandth of an acre. In this case we're going to be 17.5. We're going to stretch that tape, mark the ground, and we're going to count population. And then we're going to make a prediction on ear count. And we say ear count, if the stalk is more than a third the size, uh, has a, a, a one third less the size, we would count it out. Now in the fall when you're out evaluating stands, you could see the stalk diameters be identical, the plant is photocopied, but the ear is missing. That's an indication that you have a reproductive problem. Something happened at the end of the cycle, getting it pollinated with insects <coughs> or disease or something like that, and you have a trouble. On the front end when you're stretching the tape, and we go out here, it's going to be a growth and development issue. You're going to look for this, the picket fence stand. So when I walk out into a customer's field and there's a lot of skips and I ask him what the problem is, what's the answer I don't want to hear? I don't know. I tell you he wasn't there earlier. He don't, we don't know if that's a planter problem or not. Okay. Early in the season we would know because we would dig in that hole and we would look for a seedling blight, um, insect damage, that type of thing. But now it's going to be registered as a skip but we don't know if that meter had problems or if it was the seed or the seed that we had in, in it itself. So the early evaluation is going to be crucial. But when we talk about the photocopied part where we have smaller plants, any plant that's more than a collar behind, we're not going to count it as an ear or one third stalk diameter. When we're talking about growth and development issues, um, growth and development in size, 90, 85, 90 percent of the time the answer is going to be below ground. Very seldom is it above ground. We're going to have to dig those guys up and we're going to have to figure out what it is. So we're going to put our spade to work there and we're going to dig them out of the ground. We're going to pay attention to how the soil comes up and we're going to go down there and try to figure out why those plants come up late. But the first thing I'm going to do when I get into your field is I want to go to the oldest fossil record that we have to figure out why this plant is small. So we're going to dig a small plant and we're going to compare it to the big plants. And the first thing I'm going to go to is, is the seed root. And the first thing that we're going to do then is to evaluate um, planting depth. We put that seed in the ground, the mesocotyl heads for the surface, as soon as it sees daylight, it's going to set the crown. And that crown is going to take about three quarters of an inch to set. If we plant deeper, that mesocotyl is just going to be longer and the crown is going to be in the same spot. If we plant too shallow, that crown is going to be on top of the ground. What I'm going to be checking is do my little plants have the same length of mesocotyl as my big plants? Because planting depth is going to drive emergence, especially when we're planting in cool soils. Did I maintain uniform depth? The other thing I'm going to look at when I check planting depth is I'm going to look at seed orientation. Was this thing planted spike down or spike up? When we put the seed in the ground, did we put it spike down or did we put it spike up? A situation where you can see the difference in emergence taking place here because I got to grow another half, three quarter inch, turn this sucker around. Now, if I got 70 degree soils, they're going to germinate at the same time. This isn't going to make a difference. They're the same age. They're going to be a little bit behind getting out of the gate. Where we run into trouble is when we're planting corn here anyway, the end of March, 1st of April in cold soils and we're struggling to get the corn up. This guy could take seven or ten days to make this turn. If these get seven to ten days behind, they're going to be barren plants. And that's one of the risks of planting in cold soils is losing your spike down plants. Now as we look below ground, one of the things you're going to be asked to evaluate is down pressure. 
and you're going to try to figure out where we put excessive down pressure on and where we put very light down pressure on. Of course our goal would be to have the first, second, and third roots move down through the soil uh, and then the fourth and fifth come behind it and the brace roots do the same. That would indicate that they're moving through the soil without much restriction at all. Some of the things that you're going to look for now because we have brace roots is how well are some of those brace roots getting damp. And they're going to tell you where the wheel track went for the planter because they're going around it. They can't penetrate through it. When you pull back on it, we want to see kind of a uniform root dis distribution. If we see something like this to where the roots are moving out across up here and we don't have anything down in here, indication that we probably have too much down pressure in that planter itself. Uh, and this is too much down pressure on top of tillage in a situation where um, there's very little activity coming down through here. They're all trying to get around uh, where the planter itself ran. Of course, there are many other things producers can look for in evaluating a stand. Ken also recommends checking the furrow condition. Is your soil showing you remnants of a row cleaner, coulter, or disc openers? And it's a good idea to check for uniform pollination and ear development. We hope that gets you started. Still to come on Corn College TV, you planted in the spring, now you want to know how deep. Missy Bauer answers your questions on finding planter depth, next on Ask the Agronomist. Later, big iron on soft soil can spell disaster. Ken Ferry is back with Margie Fisher to discuss finding the right tools to fix fields, coming up when Corn College TV returns. Avail Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer is designed to increase your fertilizer efficiency and can boost your yield potential by 10 to 15 percent. How do we know? Well, first we tested Avail in a series of university trials that across different states, different counties, different fields and farms just like yours to prove that Avail will keep phosphorus available for the entire growing season. Avail has been proven around the world, and that's good news for your crop as well as your wallet. So visit chooseavail.com and see where Avail takes you. Rust is destroying your valuable equipment and property. Rust Guide permanently stops rust the easy way. No scraping, grinding, or sandblasting. Brush, spray, or roll Rust Guide onto any rusted metal and it will not rust again. Rust Guide is not a paint, but an industrial strength formula that kills rust on contact. It leaves a smooth finish that can be left as is or painted. Rust Guide protects from salt, manure, fertilizer, urine, and rain. Call 888 Rust Guide to talk to a rust expert. That's 888 Rust Guide or go to rustguide.com. Confusion, doubt, fear, forces that drive the markets in unpredictable ways. It would be nice to find a voice you trust, a broker with an impeccable compliance record, someone with global contacts and expertise, a sought-after speaker who simply tells it like it is. All that with 30 years of experience navigating these markets. Someone like that would be quite a find. Bauer Trading. Experience at work for you. I'm Greg Vincent, the editor of AgWeb, and welcome to our new site. This marks the end of many long months by a lot of us here at Farm Journal Media, and also even some of our loyal readers who were dedicated to helping us remain the homepage of agriculture. This new site is designed to have more vibrant content, easier navigation, and faster load times while still delivering the same quality information that you've come to expect from AgWeb over the past 10 years. So go ahead and take a look around the site and let us know what you think. AgWeb, the homepage of agriculture. In today's Ask an Agronomist question, farmers want to know, how do I measure the planting depth of my plants later in the season? Well, what we want to do if we're in the season to measure planting depth, we're going to go out with our spade and we're going to dig up some samples of plants. We're going to shake all the dirt off them, all the soil off, and then go ahead and look for what we call the actual seed rut in the mesocotyl. And we can usually tell where the actual seed was by seeing a little bit of a bump here of the old remnants of the seed. And then we notice that we can see the seed roots there or the radical there. This is then attached to what we call the mesocotyl. And this mesocotyl is this elongated piece that then joins up to the crown. The base of the crown of the plant and the mesocotyl there is what we're going to want to go ahead and measure. We're going to take a measurement on this and then add three quarters of an inch to it. So a lot of times in the field I'll even go through and actually take and just snap this right off and do a measurement then with my tape measure 
I'm going to measure whatever the length of this mesocotyl is and then add three quarters of an inch to it. Or on my tape, I'll place that right at three quarters of an inch. So in this case, if I do that, my planting depth is an inch and a half. So in this case, it's an inch and a half planting depth. I can tell that at any point during the season. It's not something I just have to do early in the season. I can monitor that or determine that at any point during the growing season. Coming up next, fixing those problem spots in your field. Ken Ferry tells us which tools are best at digging us out of a bad situation and leaving the field better than we found it. Gets results with strong roots and strong stocks for performance you can take to the bin. Go with industry leading DeKalb Genetics and proven Genuity Trait Technology, letting you get more from every acre. Go all season strong. Go with DeKalb. Growing up in agriculture, I know how important information is to America's farmers and ranchers. They have the tremendous responsibility of feeding this great nation. Here at Ag Day, we're here to help with the latest in agriculture news, agribusiness with Al Pell, the big picture on weather with Mike Hoffman, and stories about the country way of life. Join me each morning for Ag Day, the country experience. Hi, Carrie Gottschall here with the perfect solution to your storage problem a stylish garage or shop right in your own backyard. U.S. Buildings offers you revolutionary designs that are strong, durable, easy to set up, attractive, and affordable. Why have a cluttered garage when you can have plenty of neatly organized workspace? U.S. Buildings put me in my new shop in no time. Their high-quality steel structure is American-made. It's even hurricane-rated. Now, I can work on my antique cars right in my own backyard. Their innovative designs require no internal support, which means you get 100% usable space. I feel like my home is twice as large because I finally have all the storage space I need. Now all my keepsakes are here at home and not stored in a rental unit across town. No wonder thousands of Americans are using U.S. buildings. You should too. Call U.S. buildings right now. Our service representatives are waiting to answer your questions. Build it yourself and save. Ken, a lot of these tools that are designed to go deeper and fix those deep line compaction problems require a lot of horsepower. What's your advice for farmers facing those decisions? That's probably one of the biggest problems we run into, Margie. It, it, we identify the tool, or let's say we identify the depth and what we want the tool to do, and then we go to the implement dealer to purchase that tool. And a situation where depending on your soils and the conditions you're in, the amount of horsepower it takes per foot of tool or per shank can change. If I'm in a sandy soil or a silt loam, it may not take near as much per uh, foot of implement as it does in a heavy clay loam soil. And what I run into a lot of times is the implement gets overbought, if you want to say that, or the horsepower of the tractor is under. So we're under horsepower and we can't pull it to do the job we want to do. Then farmers usually lift it out of the ground so they get to a point where they can pull it and they end up above the problem area that they originally bought the tool for. So I always say be very conservative when you're talking about what horsepower it's going to take as far as, um, you know, if it's going to take 30 or 40 horsepower per shank on that tool in a sandy soil, it's going to take quite a bit more in a, in a clay loam or that type of situation. So again, test driving that equipment is a good thing. So if you have a neighbor who's got a tool like that or if the implement dealer will let you bring it out and put it behind one of your tractors and then go see if you can accomplish your goal before you make that purchasing decision is always a good idea. So demos could be a very valuable tool in yeah. making that decision. Another thing, uh, when they're in the field, how often do you recommend that they dig behind the tool? Make sure that they're getting that appropriate depth. Well, we're going to assume you know what that does, but we're going to assume that they know where the level is in each field and within each soil type within the field because it could change somewhat depending on the field itself. So they're going to need to get behind that tool and take a look at its performance based on the soil type that's in. So they may have to check at two or three different places within the field itself to make sure they're getting the job done that they want. Thank you, Ken. Thanks, Ken and Margie. Great stuff. And we hope you learned some great stuff yourself. Remember, you can always find us on the web. We post all of our shows on the Corn College TV website. And just in case you miss some information or want a loved one to learn something too. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week. Class dismissed.
Next time on Corn College TV, the cost of nitrogen is going up. Knowing how and when to use it can save you a lot of money. Next week, we break down how it breaks down. Plus, technology is helping producers get the most out of every field. Find out how these pictures are changing the way farmers are farming. And understanding uneven emergence. Solving the problem can lead to big rewards on yield. Corn College TV is produced and distributed by Farm Journal Television.